Hi everyone. Welcome to the to the last installment of this month's lessons. Um, jazzing the guitar through the Leeds Guitar Academy. So finally, fourth lesson, last lesson, yay, celebration. Um, <clears throat> all right, we've been we've been working our way through the style of jazz guitar from from the different forms the style has taken, and it has taken a lot more than those that we have uh, worked on. Uh, but also, and mostly, uh, what kind of tools you are supposed to use. Um, I say supposed to use because you're more than welcome to break all of those tools and all of those rules and invent. But the rules that we're supposed to use when approaching jazz guitar and jazz guitar playing. Um, but don't forget, you can be using these outside of the style. Um, so just really quickly, we did blues, just 12 bar. But that's where it all came from. We did the more jazzy version of the blues, the, with the diminished and the, the three six two five one to the, the turnaround to the, to the one. Last week we did um, autumn leaves, which is a more traditional standard. Uh, and this week we're going to do uh, a ballad, which, in my opinion, is a whole new ballpark so you could be you can have your it's it's not different obviously it's the same 12 notes but just the way you need to approach everything is just different so you could be on the ball with your blues comping your blues soloing on the ball with your just mid tempo up tempo jazz standard uh, but then the ballad comes in and some stuff just does not work. So it's the same notes, it's the same processes, it's the same tools, but it just doesn't work because the ballad needs a different vibe. So it's not its not the playing that's wrong, it's not that you're not fast enough, it's not that the chord isn't big and scary enough, it's just the way you should approach your playing with a ballad. So all of the stuff we, we did this week, uh, sorry, the last few weeks, all of it is usable. So your big chords, your small chords, your drop twos, your drop, your drop twos and fours, your drop threes, um, all of that's usable. Just the guide tones, all of that, extensions. Um, everything we've been learning and developing so far, all of that is usable. So, all your modes. But the way is, you just need to let the song breathe in a different way. So this week, we're going we're going over polka dots and moonbeams. And um, all right. So the first thing uh, I. Th Think we should be aware of is is the harmony in any in any any difficult or at least strange harmonic passages that it can have. So let's let's just go over that for a second. So the song is is, is fairly simple, uh, but it does have some quirky moments. Let's call them. We should all be aware of them. And um, sorry, guys. All right. And um, try and use them the best we can. But first, we need to know what they are. So the song goes. It's in G major. So it goes one, six, two. One, two, six, sorry, two. Then this is all things we covered last week, so it does a two, a minor two, five, to the six. All right, so here comes strange part number one. 
C minor sixth or thirteenth. If it's a six, you do this. Sorry. No, you do this. Or you put that that six wherever you want it. As a sixth or as a thirteenth. Then B minor. Then B flat minor. Then A minor. D. B. A. D. So right, this is the first part. This is the A. Everything here is, let's call it normal. So everything is here is diatonic, and everything here is, is explainable uh, through through the looking glass that uh, through the stuff that we uh, covered until this week. So the besides the stuff that we need to talk about now, the new stuff, the only strangest thing we have is is the B dominant. The B dot dominant is just so after the F sharp. Minor, uh, I've diminished. We have this. This is just um, the three as a dominant to go to the six. So just minor two five targeting the six, the relative minor, and then obviously since it's a minor two five, you can put in the flat nine, calling to the to the harmonic minor. Uh, so new stuff comes up now. This C minor sixth. So even if you listen to it, even the sound is like like a slap in the face. Like it's completely. It's not completely. It could be. Could be way worse. But it is out from the scale that we were using on the first four. The first yeah four bars so it even the sound sounds like like awakening like whoa what's this this is new this is this this doesn't belong here so what we have here because don't forget one thing if we do have extensions and sometimes most of the times extensions besides adding a sound they all they also add a function now, this is something we need to be aware of, aware of so if we have a minor chord with a major sixth which is the case it can only mean one thing so be aware, all you extension users out there. Um, some of those extensions do lock your card into one specific function, and if you don't want that, beware. Do not use that that extension. So, C minor with a sixth obviously is telling us that we are in Dorian territory. So we need we need to figure out this right. I have a C minor sixth. Obviously, it means Dorian, so obviously the C minor is <clears throat> the second note of some scale. Let's just leave it that, there for the moment. And then we need to find out which scale it is and why is it there. So if if C is the 2, B flat major is going to be the 1. And B flat major as the 1 makes our original G major a G minor relative minor of the B flat. So it's very simple. What's happening here is this C minor is just um, we're just borrowing we're in G major and we're borrowing the four of G minor. Which which would have as as its new one the B flat. So this is two B flat, but we're thinking G which makes this the minor fourth which is quite commonly used as a cadence. So you could have one, three, six, two, five. So this cadence of minor four, one, it's quite cool. It's quite usable. Just tune this, sorry. All right. So first, first note is is resolved, and obviously, if it's it's a minor sixth, you put Dorian over it. And also, don't forget if you have a Dorian chord, a minor. I call it I called it the Dorian Dorian chord, but 
meaning a 13th chord don't forget it as this even if even being the two of something and still needing the five it does have the tritone so it does have some element of tension a lot of them all of it actually so c minor six treat this as a dory a two that never a two five that never happens and then we go then we move chromatically and this moment here is just the the force that the chromatic movement implies so this is this is there isn't a cadence here it's just the fact that it's the same same type of chord and moving chromatically this gives the cadence its strength just to land on the a minor so we have this we've explained this is just the three this is the chromatic part and then all of this chromatic movement just to land on the two our original key the five and then the one but not the one we do it three six two five so turn around right we go back to the A, we do it all again, and at the end of the A, so we do C, B, B flat, A, D, then we fall on the one, and then this happens. We target the new key. So now we're in B major. So th this is, wouldn't be explained as, all right, we have some strange chords here. No, this is just, all right, we're moving to a completely different key. If we keep looking through the oh, if we keep looking through the eyes of G major, all of it or most of it will sound strange. So let's just do a two five one to the G and then all right, off the G into B major. So this and then just a complete slap in the face. So, all right, we've landed. We do a two five one and land B major. And this is just a dominant six to go to the two. So turn around one. I'm on six, two, five, and forget we're all of this is now through the eyes of B major. One, six, two, five, one. Right now, the funny part comes in. This comes in. Right. If you if you have the the real book, um, what you what you have here by now after this B major is, uh. Uh, e dominant augmented so you have the E the plus and the seventh so you could do it like this this although it sounds as it should sound because it's a really dissonant chord it does however um, or you could do sorry now yeah because this because the, the, the main selling point of this chord is the augmented voicing but you're putting it in the middle of the chord it does sound as it should but why not put it as an as an extent as an extension so leave out the five which we would do this and treat this augmented as a flat 13th so have the one have the three have the seven have the nine which you could Turn into a flat nine if you want, or a sharp nine. But the the goal here is put that sh that flat that sharp five on the top, so make it really obvious. Which you could keep for the A minor because it's a C. So B major, C e as an augmented dominant, which just means a, which just we'll just be using this as a five to the two. Five back to G major. So this is it. So you have G major, one six two five, one six two two five to the six. The C minor is just borrowing from G minor. The the B section is all in a different new key, different key. To go back to the <clears throat> the original key, you have the five of the two, meaning an E as an augmented. Two five one and repeat and then done you finish with a turnaround. All right, so all of this is quite simple. Let's just once again everything we've learned until now you can use. All of it is usable. Modes, arpeggios, uh, sorry, scales, uh, 
patterns, guide notes, use targeting the guide notes, the approach notes, the guide notes. All of it is usable. Um, all right. Um, let's just discuss our options for the strange notes. So you're in. Let's let's go from F sharp to B minor. So F sharp. Sorry, F sharp, B seventh, E minor, C minor, B minor, done. So if we just just imagine the sequence in your head. So if you have this, so we're in Locrian territory. Into the B region dominant. You don't need to use the, the flat nine. You could use, you could borrow from the melodic and just do a natural nine, but keep in the flat thirteen. That was, that is what really needs to be there. So, or E, which means Aeolian. Right. Now. So let's just do all this sequence, and then we have to find a way, a really intelligent way, to fall on Sidori. So. And then all of this section, just treat it chromatically. So this B, although it's the th it's the three, and you could do C Dorian, then go to this as Phrygian, and then go back to this as Dorian, and then go back to the two. Since since the the strength of the movement is already in the harmony, so why don't do the same in the melody? So just think of these all as twos. So. Right. So this chromatic passage just brush Dorian all over it and it, it does work. Uh all right. The B is just same thing but in a different key and the um, that E dominant all right, you could you could think of that E as two things. You could either think of it as augmented which means augmented scale, so... Or, think of this note, which I put on the top, not as a, not as a sharp 5, but as a flat 13th. Which usually it is. So, you could think... Um, and since it's a five to a minor, you could think so. You could think augmented because you you are really thinking of this as an augmented fifth. You could think of this as a flat thirteenth, which just means a five to a minor. So you could do you could do once again Phrygian dominance. You could do as well just a flat thirteenth. So keep the the natural ninth. So imagine Phrygian dominant. You're not doing this B, this flat nine, you're doing a natural nine. Or, if you really want to go crazy, just think super Locrian and think of this as, think this is altered because flat 13 does fit in altered. And you could do, just do Locrian, super Locrian, sorry. Right, in this, this in this moment, I, I'd suggest just loop this. Yeah, so. Song that you like to hear. Just try them all. Right. 
Dominant. Yeah, but yeah, and sometimes you fall into these kinds of little like you're obliged to admit that maybe not not everything works. Example: the flat nine, the E, is an F natural. Which doesn't exist in the origin, the original scale, and it will mean that. Sorry, you'll have to do this for the A. So it doesn't exist in the scale. It's it's half, half, half a step below the most important note of your next chord. So hmm, is it an option? You could use it as an chromatic approach. So. Maybe it's too much. So for that, <coughs> you you have a uh, frigid flat six without the flat nine. So and then last one would be super low again. You could use on that one, and then two five to the one, blah blah blah. All right, so then all of that is normal. So C minor sixth, Dorian, keep it Dorian until you hit the A minor. Um, and then this E, you could use augmented scale, Phrygian dominant, mix leading just with the flat six, oh, flat thirteenth. And super local, which means you're thinking of the chord as altered, which also means that in your comping, all of the altered notes could be used. Just pick the ones you think favor the song or your you likes the most. For example, the flat the flat thirteen is, is an awesome one because it becomes the three of the A. And the flat seven of the flat seven of the D, and then you just have to lower it up a step. So that would be an interesting one because it makes more sense with the rest of the song. Um, no, else you can do this. Yeah. So B, B with a ninth. This. this, keep with this, that's the drop voicing, with this, and then so you have this little melody going. This is the kind of stuff that I like to get into with comping in ballads. Like, first of all, in my opinion, you have to be. You, you, I think you can go because obviously a ballad means slow, means playing slow. What, what in your mind that means is entirely up to you. But in my mind, what, this, what, the, what that means is. You do get a little bit more space um, in a number of things. You get more time to do stuff, to just to add stuff without overdoing it. You do have to m juice something a little bit more from each chord because you're taking so long moving to the next one. So technically, physically, and sonically, you're able to do it, and maybe the audience is is able to accept it because you have a bigger window to fit stuff in you have more time in the melody so playing the melody or playing the comping you can either play the melody with extras we're gonna do that in a second 
and as a comper, the melody um, will, the vocalist will give you, just looking at the melody, you can clearly see that the, the vocalist will give you, will have to give you because it's how the melody is, is written, lots and lots and lots and lots of small spaces where, where you could add, add a little response linked to what the melody is doing. So just the fact that what's a ballad, it's a song, it's slow. Just saying this opens a wide array of stuff that you could be doing, that you couldn't be doing in a blues, even, even less if you're thinking like a bebop version of a blues, like Blues for Alice, or Rhythm Changes, or something like Autumn Leaves, which is a medium to up-tempo song. So a ballad, just, just for the simple fact that it's played slow, <coughs> opens up a lot of extra stuff that you could be using. Not extra tools, but just juicing a little bit more out of the tools that you already learned. So, add a comper, and obviously being slow, um, just being a ballad. Ballads just have, just have a different thing to them. You could just, you could be really... So you can go really fancy. And I think the voice leading works really well in, in ballads because you have such a wide spread for each chord that the thing that almost draws the public back is earring bam. Like so you have the song really played slow. But you have this little note on top that you never leave. So doom. Same note. Same note. Half a step above. So the chord changes, the melody changes, the, the rhythm, the dynamics might change. Your chords are really sparse. So if you don't do that well or extremely well, maybe you could lose the public just because the song could get a little bit too much slow and muddy and pasty and all, being a bell but not having that drive, which it, it should also have. But you're comping because it keeps reminding the audience of something that never left. It does draw them back, so we... if they could, even if they don't understand what they're listening, they do listen a motif, a pattern that never leaves their ears, which is you're always giving them a small hint, melodic hint on top of your card. thing that we could if you need to turn this to, into an exercise first thing that you could be doing is just go over the the, the comping with mainly voice twos or if you're a brave little man and you'd be doing this with just a vocalist you, you definitely have to use drop four two and four because let's go metal with it you need to add some big voicings in there just to fill everything that you can feel that the drums aren't in the bass that isn't there could aren't able to do because they're not there so but 
let's let's imagine we're doing this in a band um, band scenario and if we want to turn this into an exercise and I'm saying this thinking that whoever is watching this already went through the uh, the other three videos and did master or at least uh, grasp a bit of what job to voicings is I'd say just choose a voicing uh, choose a direction which you want to go and like have the song in front of you of, and circle a part of the song that all right this idea goes to this section and I can't break this idea until I, until I, until I finish this section so and, and because jazz songs and jazz standards are grouped in sections it's quite easy to do this so you could have uh, one way of doing it for the A and then changing it for the B and then going back to it for the A or for the last day just do another version of your first exercise so but just do drop two voicings choose a starting voicing and either right I'm going always going up until this section ends or I'm always going down until this section ends and really because then you're gonna you're gonna color around it but for now you're the only thing you want to do is be aware you're giving a melody on top of your harmony. I'm just doing the bass so we can hear the movement. So, for example, now we did, I started with the G with the B on top. I can keep the B for the E, like I'm rapping. Uh, go up to the C for the A, keep the C for the D, and now you kind of fell into a, a really interesting section because you could go boring with it but sometimes boring is good uh, so you're you're here and this note doesn't exist this is a C sharp usually you'd go this so C and D to this D G um, and back to the G so G I'm thinking of the chords now. Not in this. But why not put the C sharp? Because it will imply Lydian and G is the is is is, is Ionian because it's the major scale. But why not imply uh just ever so slightly a little bit of Lydian. Which means this. You could do it like uh, this. This is where I want to get at. You need to try this stuff because sometimes you'll you clumsy your way. You you'll just fall on interesting stuff. Yeah, because why sharp fourth? It does not work. It shouldn't work. Um, it's wrong technically, but why not? It's a ballad. You have so much space to put in color, and like the next chord, which happens in two beats, will correct it. And the voice leading does give it an extra strength because you're going to you're going chromatic and that usually has a, a strength of its own. So. Then you could do this. But this voice could be a bit boring, so you could try this one. Oh, sorry. Or if this is maybe too much, just do this. And then once you get back into the E, it's all resolved. Then keep going. Right, so let's keep with the exercise. Then keep going. Um, all right, another thing. The F sharp to B, um, so this works for the F sharp. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't work either way, so you'll have to move this. So I have to do this. <laughs> go 
baroque. Um, but usually, the funny thing is, even physically, it's easier. Uh, you can every time you have a minor two five, you could just which whichever finger is sticking out. Um, quite a non-musical way of explaining this. So, but sometimes in the on the guitar physically, it's it's better than musically. And whatever finger is sticking out is the one that you have to move half a step below to get into diminished territory. And if it's a minor two five, you do want to get into this because a it makes it even clearer that's a minor two five and the position can just be moved it's an, and it's an, e an easy way of just doing a little a little small melody um so whatever finger so this is the f sharp whatever finger is sticking out you'll have to put half a step below because that'll turn itself into the flat nine this is just diminished could do you could really transport that chord or to wherever and then if you wanna if you're feeling remorse by now and you're feeling sad you could fix it and go back to just pure B7 and get the sorry get the E ready and then you have this would be the C So, so this maybe wouldn't work. We got a little bit too far in the guitar, but let's imagine we do this until, until so until the that B. But then we use the voicing to get back into the guitar. So, so to go flatter. But the idea is you always have this melody in the top that never let lets people go. Sorry. So you, you, uh, you get this moment to break a little bit of the movement, shake it, shake things a little bit up, move down on the guitar, which will give you more space, and just break, shake a little bit, break a little bit of the the already four bar long pattern of a note always keeping going higher and higher and higher and maybe if it's a ballad which means it takes time by this time the audience got it synced into it but now it needs a little bit of fresh air so you created this pattern now destroy it but use one pattern to destroy the other which means I'm just using the diminished chord which I can move in minor thirds just to help me get into Flatter zone of the guitar, back to an E. And then I could go C minor, sixth, keep it for the C, the B, and then just go chromatic. And then D. So not D. Sorry. And then by this time you'd have a yeah but this the thing is this so in your comping um in your comping um just do just be aware that you have a lot of more time so you need to use that time to either be more creative with your chords which just means do small melodies which would be the next step after this thing we've been discussing now, uh, which could mean be aware of the, be really aware of the melody. So the melody is not something that the vocalist has to learn. Even if you're not playing the melody, play the melody, learn the melody, know the melody, know when it's fast, know when it's when know it's when, when it's slow, know when it stops. Because when it stops, that dead air that will happen needs something, needs a little bit of call and response from piano player, the guitar player, bass player, but probably either you or the piano player. Um, so be aware that if it's a ballad, you'll have a lot more space that can't be left unattended. You'll have to do something over it. Um, so yeah, last thing, just for the comping. As a 
next step for what we just finished doing, um, small melodies between the chords does work. That's that's the next that's the, the logical step. That's what you'll be using in those moments of dead air. So just just little things that you can do by just slightly stretching whatever finger is doing your melody. We're just quickly going to one of the other voicings that you know. So, so let, let's let's do a proper one just for the first four bars and just go over possibilities. So this I'm doing just two two different drop voicings of the G. Putting the A as a passage note. You could either just do it or just adapt your chord. So this means I'm doing one, three, six and nine instead of just putting in the nine to the already played position. So this would mean sorry this this needs to fall in the E. So repeat it. Because don't forget, there's another thing you can do. Um, chords F functions. So you can either have tonic function, subdominant function, or dominant function. And if you play any of the chords that are in the family, if the bass player keeps playing the right root, it ju it'll just sound as I'm doing extensions over my original G or A or whatever. It won't sound as a different chord. So, in this first bar, you could go G, 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 fall in the E. And, all right, for example, I want to hear the melody again. So, and then I want to fall on the E. So, whoa, do I need to do another voicing just for the E? No, because your bass player is doing the E. The G voicings will work. So, G, E, repeat the voicing you just did, fall on the A, keep it simple, you already did quite a lot of stuff on the first bar, G again, repeat, repeat it, so, but maybe now, go back. So, have one idea. Use it again. Always. You already did something. Leave it. Give it a bit of air. And then again. Sorry. Use the same idea. E, same idea, but now break the pattern. So, sorry. No, this, right. So let's imagine we, 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 we didn't move on the E. So we did this again, but went back to a new note for the E. This would just go up, up, down, down, land on the E. If we did, once again, I, I just stepped into that idea. It wasn't planned. But if, if we do do this, so E again, but with uh, the D on top now, and we want to use this bar that we're doing and just do a little, just a small melody. We could do, because this C is for the next chord, because it's. Just, just using that that first moment. Um, so G, B, sorry. Just thinking of the melody now. 
go a little bit if we wanted to move down you'd have to put something in this A to serve as a bridge for the next chord so we would do the same thing back to the E this little melody would put us here and then, and so this is another thing I was going to talk just before we finish the class um, the power of patterns and motifs so I created it as the simpler they are the better so I I show the public this and then I went back to the entire and then I went to this so now I want to do the same thing I have a new chord I want to put a little small melody in it which melody will I use patterns use the one you just finished introducing to the public Killing my vibe, but you get it, so. So just little. I'm I'm never going too far off either. The drop two voicings. The drop two voicings with a neighbor extension just to serve as a bridge in my melody. Sometimes I do use like note specific versions of the chord just to make it a little bit more colorful. Just so I can. Sorry. It's mainly that, it's mainly use the drop two voicings. After you've mastered the voicings, know where the extensions are in case you need to use them, and then write out the harmony, define a section, define a rule, like what note are you, are you going to start on, and are you going sharp, or are you going flat with your comping, with your voice leading, with your note on top, and then Create it so write the notes so you don't have to remember them mid comping. Um, try them out. <clears throat> Sorry, see if it sounds good, and then play it, play it, play it, play it, play it, and try and bridge the notes together. And that just means do neighbor extension notes. Oh, this is cool, but it's not right. So sometimes the way of target of bridging notes is just put a diminished just do the diminished with the notes you want as a passing note on top so I'm going to this voicing of the A to this voicing of the A so D sometimes it works better right um all right, all right. So we have ten minutes left. Um, all right. Um, with playing melodies and playing solos, this is just the same as we've been covering. So, do your modes, do your arpeggios, do your guide tones, do your patterns. The the question with the motifs is the same is the same thing. So if you if you just do the first four bars, one six two five. Just start on a point in your scale and just do the same lick, either going up or going down. So, so. or just stay put. Yeah. 
synthesizer. So let me just play the melody and play um, one on top of it. So. just doing the same line either moving up or down or staying still but what I'm doing is whatever melodic choreography pattern movement idea call it what you want but whatever is the idea that I acknowledge that I establish I never leave it and the force and the strength that that repeating pattern over your ears is creating it's so strong that all right even if not all of the notes are the best choices even if you have to move some of them even if you don't have to move them but you move them just to make it go a little bit farther out so for example um, um, This over the D, so G, G, E, D. So over the D, I can turn this natural nine to a sharp flat nine. So for example, if I start on the lower, the lower, lower string, so. This just means going augmented. Okay, Razzy with augmented. So, G. so let's just do the four bars again with this new pattern. Just to, you can go crazy. thing is the movement even if you go even if you go out of the scale even if you go to a really out there scale the fact that you're in, you're constantly hammering on the same idea even if the notes that you use to color that idea aren't the most like uh, they are strong but they are quite far out and some people's ears just don't like them but it's so strong just the rhythmic and uh, melodic pattern so the, the the spaces, the intervals are the same. Um, that you could you can create really um, interesting stuff. So all right, I think I'm just going to extend this lesson just a little bit further because I still need to talk about um, turnarounds, uh, which happen quite a lot on this song. So just let me get this book of magic. All right. Alright, just so um just a small just let's just let's take a little ten more minutes and just finish this. So turnarounds. Uh one six two five so oh, I need to finish this. Um all right. First, most commonly used, what I just did. One, 
minor sixth, minor two, dominant five. All right, where can we go from here? First one, straight from rhythm changes, turn your sixth into a dominant chord. Then two, five. All right, six is dominant to a minor, so this does not need to be a straight mixolydian voice. You can go, since it's a two of five to a minor, you could go flat nine. So. Or you can go flat nine and flat six, flat thirteen. Melodic options. Second thing you could do, turn those two dominants, the sixth and five, change them for their tritonic substitution. So you'd have, sorry, you have this. So you have a really funny thing, besides the one, which will turn into something different quickly um, you could do um, sorry you could um, <clears throat> all of this is is chromatic and if you turn the if you substitute the, the one for the three all of it is chromatic And, as we have spoken now uh, in this class, chromatic gives force to stuff. So, if it's chromatic, the chords could all be the same because the, the, the strength that the F-step movement creates just makes it passable. And don't forget that if you have a target, no, a target chord and you put a dominant <coughs> F-step above, it's just... it's substituted dominant so uh, you could do all of it dominant B dominant B flat dominant A dominant A flat dominant one so you'd have just this simple standard and then if you want to finish it This could be altered. Um, all right. Second thing. Um, all right. Sorry. No. This thing. Uh, if they're all. All right. Next. New next step. If they're all. If they can all be dominant. Let's go back to the the the, the first note as the G. Let's not forget that this is still a song with tonality. So. This could be everything that we apply to the dominant. This dominant could be applied to this dominant. So the one could be a three. That three could be a dominant. So everything we do to the A, we could do to the B. But let's let's not use that for now. We want to remember that G is our target note. So we'll start and finish on it. So this happens. And all of our dominant chords, which means the sixth, the five and the two can become one as well, could be augmented. I'll do this. So this could all be the, um, augmented. And if it could all be augmented, it could all be. So. And just like diminished, diminished. Augmented chords can follow patterns, so you could do boom. Right, uh, what do I have besides that? 
All right, the last one I have, so let's just revise. I'm, I'm doing this quite quickly, and if anybody has any questions, just let me know. I'll, I'm more than glad to help you. So we have one, six, two, five. One, dominant six, two, five. One, dominant six, the two can be dominant as well. Five. Sorry. If they're all dominant, they, they can all be substituted, so... Sorry. One, this, 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 this. I've substituted them all. Now I'm not going to substitute the two because I want the chromatic. What? Chromatic approach. The one could be turned into a chromatic as well, a dominant. So. All right, they can all be augmented. If they're augmented, you can use patterns over it. All right. Um, the last one, and I'm not quite sure where I got this one from, but I think. Let me think. So, all right, yeah, exactly. So what I did was, um, geez, this is strange. Mm. So this would mean, no, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so I turned my one into a dominant. In this case, it's G. So, but and I'm just I'm just thinking flat nine. So it means I'm thinking the first note of my turnaround is um, a B diminished. All right. So this now becomes. Because all of this can be turned into, so just let me exactly, so, yeah, basically that's it. Hmm, yeah, all right. All right, I'm going to construct this turnaround in the opposite way. So the five, I turned into diminished because it works. Sorry, because the, the, the dominant strength of the chord is still there. What I did before it was a chromatic it's its own dominant chromatic. I'm sorry, this is an approach. So my D7 turned into a D diminished. My A minor turned into an E flat diminished because I'm thinking of a dominant, tritone substitution, but diminished. And for my first two chords, what I did was the G and the E, I thought of them, I thought of the G as dominant, applied the same thing, which meant I did um, not G major or G dominant, but I thought of it as G7 flat 9, which means I'm starting on the flat 9, and it gives me uh, G sharp diminished. And I just, I just did that. I just applied that diminished pattern that works perfectly. Finished it. So this is my one has a diminished, so meaning G7 flat nine, take out the root, no root. This is just following the pattern. So my D turned into the jack. It should actually be. If I wanted to do all of the original chords as dominance without the root, okay, it would have to be it have to be G sharp. F sharp, this was just substituted, this is the chord, but as um, a diminished, and then boom, so, 
So what I do is one is the dominant without the root. Use the the, the minor third minor third pattern for diminished. Do the two as a dominant tritone substitution, but dom diminished as well. The five as diminished and fall into the one. You could just go uh, the one diminished. No, I'm not doing diminished, sorry, I'm doing alter. Sorry. It's another way of doing it. So just do one dominant with flat 13th, which you could also think of it as augmented. Do minor third steps. Sorry. So which means G, B flat, D flat, E, should be F flat. G, we know it as E, and then it just works. All right. Sorry, this is a little quick. This is a little confusing. So, um, this is the end of the jazz series for now. Um, thank you all for listening. Uh, this will be posted on my YouTube, my Facebook, the school's Facebook. If anybody's interested, watch them. Uh, ask me absolutely anything you want to ask. This last turnaround section was a bit crazy. We wanted to explain some of this stuff before we finished. Uh, any questions at all that anybody, anywhere, anytime watching this might have, just let me know. I'm more than glad to help you. And once again, thank you all. And I hope to see you in the online, online Guitar Academy. Thanks, guys.